What's going on everybody? It is Frankie here. It is week 11 of the 2022 NFL season. Let's get right to it. Let's get to the predictions. We start with the Thursday night game, the Tennessee Titans and the Green Bay Packers. Packers are two and a half point favorites. Tennessee coming off a win against the Denver Broncos, despite all the injuries this team has had to deal with. And this week they lost, you know, they had Elijah Molden and Lonnie Johnson. They have Parley out. They still got the win in large part thanks to Nick Westbrook's uh, Icky Kinney with five receptions for 119 yards and two touchdowns, one which was a 63-yard catch and run on a flea flicker. Um, and uh, yeah, that was good considering Tennessee has had no real help with their receiving core uh, this year. They've only had, I don't think anyone had a 100-yard receiving performance all season long, so they finally got that. So nice to help out uh, King Hall Henry there. Green Bay, that was a much-needed win. I still don't think it's enough to save Green Bay's season, but again, boy, did they need that. And they finally found a receiver they can throw the ball to. Congratulations, Christian Watson. Uh, as long as he doesn't drop the ball, as long as he stays healthy, three touchdown catches for the rookie uh, and helped uh, lead Green Bay. And again, they needed that because Aaron Jones and Aaron Rodgers can't do everything by themselves, even though you know, Rodgers hasn't been able to do much because uh, you know, you're getting older, the receiving core has been bad. But this was a much-needed win for Green Bay. Got it done there, uh, picked it off, uh, won it against Dallas, uh, and spoiled the Mark McCarthy return. So for this game here, Thursday night, which at least this is a decent Thursday night game because poor Al Michaels has just been getting just the worst game this all season long. I am rolling with Green Bay here. Uh, they're at home. They have a little bit more momentum going for them right now. Uh, Tennessee has a little bit of injuries. Green Bay at home. I think we're going to see a nice performance from Aaron Jones. Uh, we'll see what Watson can do in the second game. We'll see if Tennessee can stop him. But I think Rodgers, combination of Rodgers and Jones, will give Green Bay the victory here on Thursday night. Give me the Packers, minus two and a half. Bears Falcons. Falcons are three-point favorites. Uh, Chicago almost won yesterday. Cool. Atlanta's whatever. Give me the Falcons minus three. I don't care. The Cleveland Browns and the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are nine-point favorites. We'll get to the... Both of these teams had some awful losses yesterday. Although the Browns lost, you can't say it was as bad as the Buffaloes. But we'll get to Buffaloes in just a second. Um, Cleveland is just trying to cling on to whatever is left of the season. They are three and six. Uh, they're in, I feel like, a must-win spot here against the Bills. Uh, but, yeah, and th just when we're starting to think, okay, maybe Cleveland's defense has stepped it up. They showed... They, they played better in the last two weeks. They got annihilated by Miami. Although Miami... Can do that to teams. Um, the Dolphins didn't punt all game. They only got one, uh, it was only one stop. The Browns got one stop for Miami. And uh, yeah, it's just been that has been the most disappointing thing about Cleveland this year has been how awful their defense has been. We expected much better out of them this year, and they have not delivered at all. And we are coming closer to Deshaun Watson's first game as a member of the Cleveland Browns. So we're getting near the end of that. But yeah, it looks like their season is over here. But Buffalo. Uh, I, I can't even put into words how awful of a loss this was. And yeah, if you're a Bills fan, you, you, I'm, I'm sure there's nothing I can say that make you feel better about the all the things that had to go right. The the, the Jefferson fourth down catch, uh, the, the weird fumble at the end of the game there, and then Allen throwing the pick. Um, it, just one of the most bizarre, brutal losses we've seen um, ever in the NFL, at least in the regular season, at least it wasn't the postseason. But this game was over when Buffalo had the ball with a minute left, and they had the ball at Cleveland's, you know, at Cleveland's... Uh, <laughs> Or Minnesota, excuse me, Minnesota's one-yard line. And Josh Allen fumbled it. Minnesota gets the touchdown. Minnesota gets the win uh, after, you know, they go in overtime. Josh Allen, I don't know if his right elbow is still bothering him, but just a couple bad plays in this game. Uh, he didn't look like he was uh, hampered, but he threw some terrible interceptions uh, in this game, two in the red zone. Um, and, yeah, the fumble. So I like Josh Allen, but, gosh, you got to be able to got to be able to close games better than this. And, uh, yeah, again, I mean, they were up, what, what, 17 in this game? And could not get it done, so it's, it's another... Another bad situation for Buffalo. But this is the Browns. This should not be as difficult as it was against um, Minnesota. Uh, the Bills are a much better team. They're still, I think, probably the most complete team in the NFL. I say that they come through. They're motivated from what happened yesterday, and they win this game pretty easily. Give me the Bills. Minus nine. The Philadelphia Eagles and the Indianapolis Colts. The Eagles are nine and a half point favorites. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we don't know what the Eagles are going to do until later tonight because they play Washington here on Monday Night Football. We do know uh, last week they took on Houston. It was a Thursday night, so they, they were well rested for tonight's game. But they uh, they got to 8-0. A solid win against Houston, which, again, it's Houston, but they did what they needed to do in that game. Jalen Hurts continues to have his awesome season. Um, and, yeah, the Eagles continue to be great on defense and offense there. Indianapolis, what a surprise this was. Uh, Colts were pulled off the upset with Jeff Saturday. All the, 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 the up backlash, I guess, with Jeff Saturday being head coach. And we still don't know how he's going to be. But that was, a, that was a neat win against a Raiders team that has been beyond disappointing. And I would wonder if Josh McDaniels is going to be a one-and-done coach. Um, the Raiders just cannot seem to have any luck hiring coaches right now. But um, the Raiders, uh, 
Yeah, if you're not, we cannot overcome Indianapolis there. Great win for Jeff Saturday. It seems like he's well liked in the locker room, at least in one game. Matt Ryan played better uh, in this game, and uh, I mean, it couldn't have been any worse than Sam Ellinger. But yeah, if you're a Colts fan, there's a little bit of optimism, maybe heading into next year. But yeah, I, for this season, I don't see it. Uh, although it would be, <clears throat> my gosh, if the Colts were able to beat Philadelphia, you may have to see a situation where Jeff Saturday becomes permanent head coach, um, just be- becomes coach for next year, just based off of uh, if they're able to pull off this upset. But I don't think that's going to happen here. Still, what, still trying to figure out where the Eagles' loss is going to be. I still think it will happen, but I don't think it's going to be in this game. Too complete of a team. Indianapolis has too many problems and issues. And even though Philadelphia's at home and Philadelphia played better yesterday, they're not the Eagles. They're not as talented as the Eagles, and that will lead to an Eagles win. Give me the Eagles. Minus nine and a half. The New York Jets and New England Patriots. The Patriots are three and a half point favorites. Jets. Kind of, I honestly thought about taking the Jets in this game. But probably my the cynical part of my brain did not want to take the Jets. The part of my, I, was, I, I wanted the Jets to win this game so badly, but because I, you know, they're coming off one of their the biggest win of the last two years, biggest win in years for the Jets, beating the Bills. Um, you know, Zach Wilson with his best performance that we've seen for all season and one of the best performances we've seen from him at all. Seventy-two percent completion percentage. Uh, didn't make many mistakes. He only had one turnover in that game. They ran the ball well. Um, again, they have a great running game. They have a great defense. Don't make any mistakes at quarterback. And uh, yeah, but, but the Jets just look awesome. Right now, in um, okay, <laughs> awesome might be a strong word, but they look great. Considering with the Jets, all right, fine. Considering with the Jets usually do, they look awesome, and it has been a great uh, balance here between the running game, the defense, and the quarterback that's not making mistakes. That's what they need to do. Uh, but that was a great win against Buffalo. Now they're coming off a bye. I wanted to take the Jets, but I, I had to roll with New England. The cynical part of me decided to take New England, um, coming off a win against oh, New England. Just uh, had a bye as well, so it's two teams coming off a bye, which is a rarity, um, and uh. I, Patriots are at home, so I give them the edge there. Um, you know, you, you still wonder about uh, Mac Jones, another guy who, as long as he doesn't make mistakes, he'll be fine. Uh, defense played well against the Colts there, only hold, going to the three points. That's what led to uh, Frank Reich getting fired. So I think New England at home, they will have the slight edge. I think they'll win the game here. Uh, I think the defense will play uh, lights out, and I think that'll be enough here. I, I, I want the Jets to win. I want to be able to pull it off, but I don't see it against this New England team at home coming off a bye. Belichick off a bye. I'm, I'm, I'm just not rolling against New England. Give me the Patriots, minus three and a half. Rams Saints, uh, Saints are three point favorites. God, Rams, so disappointing, so disappointing. I don't know what the hell happened, and the Saints, blah. Give me the Rams plus three, I guess, because I can't imagine the Rams are this bad. But there's a lot of bad games this week, and this is one of them. The Detroit Lions and the New York Giants. The Giants are three and a half point favorites. Lions, <laughs> two wins in a row. It looks like here. Um, or actually, uh, no, 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 not two wins. They almost won three, but. They beat Chicago. Um, or actually, no, they did, this is two wins in a row, excuse me, because uh, they beat the Packers, and now they beat the Bears. Uh, the 13-game road losing streak is over. Um, defeating Chicago like this. Great game from um, uh, St. Brown. 10 catches for 119 yards. He's the 11th player since 1950 to record 135 or more receptions in his first 25 games. Um, get get the under, swift the ball more. As long as he's healthy, he's, he can be a good reliability for them. So the Lions are starting to show a little promise here. But I got to roll up my Giants, and they did what they needed to do against Houston. It was not a pretty win, but thankfully, Saquon continued to be Saquon. He's continued to be such a positive impact for us. 152 rushing yards on 35 carries. And then you had Daniel Jones, who, again, four, um, looked solid yet again. 192 yards, 13 for 17, two touchdowns, no mistakes. Perfect game from Jones, uh, in, in, in my estimate. Um, and the defense continues to uh, to be great. So we're looking at a, a possible 11-6, and 12-5 Giants team. They can very well do that here. They are, three, again, three and a half point favorites at home. I'm liking the Giants here in this spot. More talented than Detroit. I think we'll see Jones and Barkley get to the Lions defense. And I think the Giants defense is going to do some things to Detroit. Um, I'm, I'm loving what this Giants team has done. Again, I know Houston and Detroit are not the best teams, but whoever they face, they usually win. And so I'm proud of what this team has done. Hoping that this continues heading into next week, into this week. I'm ro- loving the Giants. Rolling with the Giants. Give me the Giants. Minus three and a half. The Carolina Panthers and the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are 12-point favorites. Ravens coming off a bye. Carolina, on the other hand, beat Atlanta on Thursday Night Football, which well, that, 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 that was quite a game as, as Thursday Night Football continues to just, <laughs> just stink. Um, was that Thursday night? I, I can't even remember. Yeah, it was. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was such an unmemorable game. Uh, but um, it's weird that the Panthers are actually better now they got rid of Christian McCaffrey. Uh, yeah, but it's weird. P.J. Walker... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the Ravens, you got to roll with the Ravens here. Got to roll with Baltimore. 12-point favorites. 
Uh, still have a great defense. Even with Lamar, didn't have his two uh, his two best guys, Mark Andrews and Rashard Bateman, the last week. The, the defense was still amazing. They sacked Andy Dalton four times. Uh, Justin Houston had a great game. And the Ravens now have probably the easiest schedule in the NFL. So the pressure looks like is off them here. Um, they only faced one winning team along the way, Cincinnati. The rest of the team, this was last week, the final eight opponents had a combined 24 and 44 record. So the Ravens could certainly make a case for number one in the AFC. We'll see if they can do that here. I think that will continue here in this game. Lamar is going to step up. Ravens offense is going to step up. And Carolina does not have the firepower to contend with Baltimore. Give me the Ravens. Minus 12. The Washington Commanders and the Houston Texans. The Commanders are two and a half point favorites. Uh, Washington, congratulations on potentially getting rid of Dan Snyder. Houston's awful. Worst team in the league. Give me Washington. Okay, it's sad that we're getting to the point of the season where there's a lot of, a lot of bad games. Speaking of bad games, uh, Raiders and Broncos. The Broncos are three point favorites. Uh, Raiders could not beat <laughs> Jeff Saturday. Uh, J- uh, Jeff Saturday has more wins as an Indianapolis head- Colts head coach than, than, than uh, Josh McDaniels. Uh, bizarre. Uh, McDaniels has to be gone. And Denver, let's ride. Broncos minus three. The Dallas Cowboys and the Minnesota Vikings. The Cowboys are two point favorites. That was a rough one. That was a rough loss yesterday. Uh, good to see Mike McCarthy actually help the Packers for once. Um, leading two touchdowns there in the third quarter, and then it just was not able to get done. Rodgers uh, really stepped up there in the second half. The defense lost their uh, lost their footing. Uh, some questionable decisions, like going forward on fourth and four and overtime. Like, what are you doing? Uh, just kick the field goal or whatever. Um, and now this is a monumental game against Minnesota. And Minnesota pulling off the win of the year, the game of the year. They pulled off that victory. Down 17 points in the second half. Um, I'm liking the swagger of this Vikings team. They, 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 they're, 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 they're good on both sides of the ball. Kirk Cousins right now, it seems like he's well-liked in that locker room, even though, yeah, I thought my question about Kirk Cousins, but he seems like he's well-liked in the locker room. It seems like there's a, a it's like you watch their like plane videos and they seem like there's an ease about them. They seem like they really enjoy each other's There's good chemistry with this team right now. So uh, things are looking good for Minnesota. But I'm going to roll with Dallas. I'm going to roll with Dallas here, barely with the edge. Uh, I'm going to say the offense. I'm going to say Dak and Zeke have a big game. And it's just really enough. I, I, was, I was thinking about taking Minnesota. And this might be a game that I look back on tomorrow uh, on Sunday and I go, darn it, why don't I take Minnesota? But I'm, I'm, I think Dallas motivated after that bad loss. I think they're going to come back and win this one. Um, but it's, it's going to be a fun game. It's going to be a fun – this might be the game of the week, these two teams going at it for, uh, you know, maybe the two or three best teams. Two, two of the three best teams probably in the NFC. They're going to go for it here. But I think Dallas gets the win with the offense. They pull it off. Give me the Cowboys minus two. The Cincinnati Bengals and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Bengals are five-point favorites. Cincinnati coming off a bye, coming off destroying Carolina, coming off Joe Mixon having one of the best performances ever. And I don't say that facetiously. I mean, you look at his fantasy numbers. They are they were out of his world. He had in standard leagues he had fifty points, which is a rarity. It's only happened like ten times since the merger. Um, give Joe Mixon the ball more, Cincinnati. I think that's something you really need to uh, look into. Uh, but the problem with the Bengals is that they're zero three in the AFC North, and they're going to have to. Try to pull off a win here against Pittsburgh, which is possible because I mean, glad that TJ Watt came back. Um, but so that, that did help the Steelers a little bit there. Their run game was better here. They had uh, 217 yards on the ground. Najee Harris had a, had a much improved uh, game there. Uh, he and Jalen Waddle played well. But the Steelers still have a lot of issues at quarterback on offense. So I'm going to roll with Cincinnati. Coming off the 42 points, I'm going to say they keep that rolling. Mixon, Burrow, they get it done here in this spot. And they finally get a win in the AFC North. They're going to need one if they want to keep their season alive. I think they'll have to get one here. I think they will. Give me the Bengals. Minus five. The Kansas City Chiefs and the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chiefs are seven-point favorites. Kansas City, another great win for them. Um, what is that? Just uh, four touchdowns again from Mahomes. Um, they, they, they continue to be amazing on offense. There are, three, there, there are three legitimate Super Bowl contenders right now. There are three. It's the Eagles, the Chiefs, the Bills. Those are the three. And it's been that way for a while. But those are the three teams right now that can legitimately see as Super Bowl champions. Everybody else is like Tier 2 or Tier 3. But those are the Tier 1 teams. Kansas City offense continues to be elite. Um, and I'm going to take Kansas City in this game. But a division game, a Sunday night game, at home. Chargers, even though they have a ton of injuries, I think they will keep it close. I think they'll... And again, we'll see, who's, we'll see who comes back. We'll see about whether or not, you know, Allen or... Um, uh, or Williams or, or Joey Bosa. We'll see, we'll see if any of these guys come back. And that has been the thing that's killed the Chargers here is when all these injuries throughout, all, throughout this entire season. It's really derailed them. Um, but I think in this game, I think the Chargers will... I think Kansas City wins. And Kansas City wins it because Kansas City will be talented enough with Mahomes and Kelsey and everybody. And that they will have an offense that will uh, let up the night. But I think the Chargers cover the spread. It'll be a close, exciting, competitive game. But the Chargers will cover it by maybe like three or four points. I could see Kansas City winning on field goal at the end. 
I say the Chargers cover the spread by seven. Or the Chargers cover the seven point spread, but Kansas City wins the game. I think it'll be a fun divisional matchup here, despite all the injuries the Chargers have had to deal with. Give me the Chargers. Plus seven. The San Francisco 49ers and the Arizona Cardinals. The Niners are seven and a half point favorites. Niners, great win on Sunday night. Um, coming off a bye, taking on Arizona, uh, taking on the Chargers, winning that. They had eight players coming back from injuries. They, but yet, they needed to. They didn't have a dominating performance. They struggled a little bit, uh, but eventually they got it done. Uh, the Niners offense found points on the board. Uh, it'll take the victory. Um, and then, uh, yeah, McCaffrey uh, has had, you know, they have so many guys now on, on the Niners offense to be able to feed the ball to. Um, we need more George Kittle, I feel like. Only targeted twice during Sunday's game. We need him to get more involved, and I think he will be here in this spot. And Arizona is just, well, that's sad. I'm trying to think of a like, more disappointing team this year. Um, I mean, the Rams are probably the most disappointing, but Arizona's right up there. Um, just, just, I mean, I know Kyle Murray's been injured, but it's just, it's just, there's just nothing going right for this team here. Um, it, it just so many mistakes, not starting well in these games. And so I think here on Monday night, we'll see a Niners team start early, score points early, and then dominate the rest of the way. I think the Niners are going to win this one by at least 10. I think they win this one here on Monday night, and they keep their season rolling. Give me the Niners, minus 7.5. That's it for now, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to this channel and you like to see, make sure you subscribe down below. I'll be back later next week with more picks. I'll have some more baseball videos and uh, NBA videos hopefully coming out later this week. A lot of things planned for this channel. Stay tuned here for more. Take care and God bless.